Welcome. What are the 10 most important elementary algebra skills? This is a video I wanted to do since a long time and related to two other hats I'm wearing, technology related and also work at the extension school. But we see algebra is extremely important in calculus, in linear algebra, in all higher mathematics. <clears throat> we are using variables. That's the start of elementary algebra. That's arithmetic. Algebra starts when you introduce a variable x for an unknown quantity. Here is a typical example of a problem. It's a word problem. Anna is 56 years old and her father is 80 years old. How many years ago was Bert father three times the age of Anna. You want to maybe guess the age, try and error, but there is a method to do that and algebra allows you to do that. You introduce a variable x which tells you how many years ago this situation took place and then you write down an equation for this uh, x. So what we have here is 3 times 6, 56 minus x. 56 minus x is the age of Anna x years ago. And then this times 3 should be 80 minus x, the age of her father Bert x years ago. And then we solve that and we will talk about how to solve that. We have to move the variable on one side and uh, all the other stuff on the other side and then you have the solution x is equal to 44. Here is a nice cartoon of Larry Gonick, and, uh, which explains that this unknown quantity what is denoted by a letter like x or y. As we have seen, it's important to be able to separate a variable. We isolate the unknown quantity and put it on one side and everything else we put on the other side. That needs some manipulation scales until x is on one side. So here is an example of a linear equation and uh, so there x appears on both sides but what we do is we move the x on one side, move all the other things on the other side and we see 8x is equal to 8 and we see that there is a solution x is equal to 1. Here again a cartoon of Larry Gonick, and uh, so we have to manipulate these expressions until uh, only x appears on one side. <clears throat> Very important is the order of operation. It's usually taught as PEMDAS, which means parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. But the basic rule is that exponentiation comes before multiplication and division and becomes before addition and subtraction. Sometimes there is ambiguity and you have to put brackets in order to make this clear. So here is an example where most humans are getting a different answer than a computer. It's an ambiguous exp expression. So most humans say 8 over 2x and x is equal to 4 is 1, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So we have used the multiplication division before, actually we have done even multiplication before division. Uh, computers uh, uh, take it from left to right if there is multiplication and division and the computers give you here uh, a computer gives you 18 as the result. Most humans, if you ask humans, most of them give you a different answer and that has produced some discussions. So there are laws and uh, it's important to be extra clear, even redundant. I wrote once about this ambiguous PEMDAS. I have a blog part for several years and this is what I wrote down in the last uh, year. <clears throat> Often we have to FOIL things out. FOIL means first take the product 
uh, of the first expressions, then the product of the outer expressions, then the product of the inner expression, and then the product of the last expressions. A situation like x plus 1 square, right? That's x squared plus x plus x plus 1. So these are the four expressions. So x plus 2, x plus 1. And then you subtract x minus 2, x plus 1. And so we find x. We can find x. Here is, a, again, a cartoon page which explains this perfectly. Sometimes we want to do the opposite and factor things out, you know, for example, to find roots. So x to the 3 minus 1, it's clear that 1 is a, is a root, but then you can factor things out, x squared plus x plus 1 times x minus 1. Let's just look at the, the problem. So if you have the problem to find all roots of x squared plus 7, x plus 10, find all x where this is 0. So we guess kind of that it's x minus 2 or times x minus 5 or x plus 2 times x plus 5 and that actually works x plus 2 times x plus 5 works so that's the factorization of this and so we know the roots are minus 2 and minus 5 adding fractions is important sometimes we have expressions which are rational expressions which we add up the rule is we have to make a common denominator. Then we can add things up. For example, here we have 1 plus x squared in the denominator, 1 minus x squared in the denominator. We have to find a common multiple, and if you can just take the product in the simplest case, this is 1 minus x to the fourth. And then if we add things up, we get uh, 1 minus x squared plus, so we get 2 in the, in the, in the denominator. So this is 2 over 1 minus x to the fourth. About multiplying powers as a rule that a to the b times a to the c is a to the b plus c. So if you have b times multiplied a by itself and you have c times multiplied a by itself, so what you have is in total you have b plus c times multiplied a by itself. It's one of the rules. Just to see whether uh, one understands this, we have three questions. Is 2 to the 6 plus 2 to the 4 equal to the 2 to the 10? Is 6 to the 2 times 4 to the 2 equal to 24 to the 2? Or is 2 to the 6 times 2 to the 4 equal to 2 to the 10? So in the third case, that's exactly what we have just done. The third case is true. The first case, that's the addition for the addition, it doesn't work. And uh, the second, uh, uh, the second one actually works too. Another rule is if you take powers of powers, it's important to put brackets because different, you can have different interpretation. A to the B to the C is not the same than A to the B to the C. So in this case, when you take A to the B and then to the power C, that's A to the B C. And uh, so we have B times multiplied with A and then we get C groups of this. B. So this is B times C multiplications. So in this case, you can ask also, yeah, is it true that we have associativity 2 to the 3 square? Is it true that this is 2 to the 3 square? And the answer is no, you can calculate it. So 8 square is 64 and 2 to the 9 is 512. So that's not true, it's minus 449. And it's really sometimes dramatic how this can change. So 10 to the 10 to the 10, you can write down that 10 to the 10 to the 10, there would be 10 to the 10 expressions. And that would be too much for, uh, for example, this computer here. Nine, linear equations. We don't look at systems of linear equations, it's linear equations, something the Babylonians have done. It's important to be able to solve that and use what we have learned with. So here's an example for which x is 7x minus 3 is equal to 11. You take the 3 on the other side, you get 14 divided by 7 is 2. x is equal to 2. Finally, that's usually the last topic of elementary algebra, is the quadratic equation where we want to solve an equation x squared plus bx plus c. 
and uh, it's a beautiful formula which you can get by adding to this equation b squared over fourth on both sides so that you can factor x minus x plus b half square on the left and move and on the other side you have then uh, b squared over 4 minus c and you have moved to c on the other side and then we can take the square root and subtract b half and you get the solution this is called the completion of the square so here is a famous example so historically important Filippo Calandri uh, has first looked at this equation and uh, it's interesting because the solution when you multiply out so you get the solution is the golden ratio this is the end let me just add a couple of remarks about this so where do you make the division between elementary algebra and intermediate algebra so there's arithmetic which usually comes before that and comes elementary algebra intermediate algebra and then some abstract or advanced uh, algebra here i have a list of 12 mathematical subjects which i usually do teach in the extension school every week one subject and algebra is really a central part it's related to anything else it's built on arithmetic it's related to geometry there's for example algebraic topology there's algebraic number theory in probability theory you can become generating functions and the algebra is needed in set theory of course is very much based on algebra boolean algebra computer science is very much related to algebra you do a lot of algebraic operations dynamical systems if you solve differential equations analysis when you are uh, looking at for example harmonic analysis Fourier analysis or complex analysis numerics of course when you do numerical computations and or cryptology uh, calculus of course builds very heavily on algebra you can also classify algebra by its difficulty like you have elementary you have intermediate you have advanced our mathematics is the mathematics of pebbles so we start with the integers like one two so we have two pebbles we have three pebbles we have four pebbles we have five pebbles that's how mathematics started with stones or sticks you put marks on sticks and uh, then you learn how to multiply this you have a multiplicative structure you, you take negative numbers you take define rational numbers then using limits uh, real numbers and complex numbers and then you build up more structure over this you can also calculate with networks so there is an addition of networks which is just a disjoint union of the networks or you can multiply if you multiply them that's the shannon product and then you get a nice algebra which uh, you can do build up everything you do also with well, you can build rational numbers you can build real numbers analog of real numbers you can build an analog of complex numbers etc you can build more uh, structure like with uh, our usual numbers and that's also uh, course starts with elementary algebra and uh, just about the acknowledgements I really can recommend the cartoon guide of Larry Gonick uh, it's absolutely fantastic and uh, I myself uh, also learned a lot from you know students as graded a lot of over the last 35 years a lot of papers and you learn from this experience you see where do students have difficulties with algebraic expressions also uh, i learned a lot from teachers in the extension school who themselves are uh, teaching and so i do that almost 12 years now so here are some uh, algebra books which i have consulted just to see a little bit what is around also it's interesting historically to see how older books have treated the subject it was a completely different style nowadays the algebra books are heavy you know, usually over a thousand pages and but there are some who kind of do a good job to make it also in a 
short way. Algebra for dummies, for example, is quite good. Or uh, Gonick's book is actually an excellent textbook and fun to read. And that's the end.